Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Over Analyzes. Today, you're in for a real treat. No, 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 don't run away, don't run away. Here's the story. So, as my, part of my day job, I am a tutor. And as part of this tutoring, the one of the main skills of tutoring is knowing when to stop talking, which, as you can imagine, is tremendously difficult for me. And so, I was just minding my own business, tutoring in some marine biology, when the class went sideways, into what I thought was going to be a simple vocabulary class. But then the student got a really weird definition on one of her words, profane. The word profane meaning people who swear, which was kind of weird because profane is a verb or an adjective, not a noun. So I asked her the context and she says, well, that's what it is in Romeo and Juliet. And I'm like, okay, so English 400 years old might have a slightly different definition than the one I'm using, but I need to go change that. So I pulled up my handy dandy open source Shakespeare document and found the word she was looking for, profaners. And it was in fact not people who swear. It was in fact people who stab people. And and I explained the, the I explained it to her and saw the dawning horror in her eyes as she realized. But it was an interesting situation. So, but anyway, I felt the urge to continue on with the rest of the speech. Now, as a tutor, I am restricted by the time constraints and the heavy knowledge that her parents are paying me for the for this work. And so I don't have time to indulge myself in the self-indulgent analysis of Shakespeare when we're just supposed to be doing a simple vocabulary review. But on this channel, I have no such qualms. So ladies and gentlemen, prepare for a reading an over-analysis of Prince Aeschylus's speech to the Capulets and Montagues. All right, let me set the stage for you. Romeo and company have been out brawling in the streets with swords, and in comes the prince. In this case, the prince is more like the sheriff or the chief of police. So, enter prince with attendants. Rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, profaners of this neighbor's stained steel. Will they not hear? What ho, you men, you beasts, that quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins. On pain of torture from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word, by the old Capulet and Mont have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets and made Vernonia's ancient citizens cast by their grave beseeming ornaments to wield old partisans in, partisans in hands as old cankered with peace to part your cankered hate if ever you disturb our streets again your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace for this time all the rest depart away you Capulet shall go along with me, and Montague come you this afternoon to know our further pleasure in this case, to old Freetown our common judgment place. Once more on pain of death, all men depart. Ex exunt all but Montague, Lady Montague, and Benvolio. <laughs> All right, so that was the passage that we took the word profaners from. And I explained to her what profaners meant in this case. Profaners of this neighbor stained steel. First, I had to explain what neighbor stained steel meant. That they had stained the steel of their swords with their neighbors. Basically, the steel, the steel was all bloody because they'd been stabbing each other. And they were profane in this act, going from the tradition of this era of Shakespeare in this culture with the human body being the temple of the Holy Spirit and the living image of God it was a profane thing an action taken against the divine to stab your fellow man for such a petty reason this wasn't war this wasn't a just war this wasn't self-defense this was just settling disputes uh, settling disputes of words by stabbing your neighbor by murder 
by defying that which is divine. So this was profane. And then we went to Merriam-Webster and looked up the actual definitions of profane, and it was all good. But in this case, you are profaning the steel because steel should only be bloodied in, in a legitimate act of self-defense, defense of another or war, with your neighbor. And in this case, neighbor being the imperative word making this murder. Because you're not supposed to stab your neighbors. All right, so what do you think, my wonderful viewers? Is this kind of analysis something you'd be interested in? I can't say I'm the biggest fan of Shakespeare. I forced myself to read him in high school because we didn't have a formal course, and I wanted to say A, say that I'd read some Shakespeare, and B, to, to have proven to myself that I was able to read and understand Shakespeare. He was pretty good. Uh, but to be honest, most of my Shakespeare knowledge came, came from reading the manga. The and the Shakespeare manga is pretty good. Plays translate really, really well into a manga because they're both really visual mediums. And the best ones, in my humble opinion, just stick 100% to the script. Use the narrators and the actors' voices and then just do it. I think my favorite one was Macbeth done with space dragons. <laughs> Of course, the As You Like It was pretty much just beat for beat. They just said it in a Chinese setting rather than a European setting. But yeah, the, the Shakespearean mangas were pretty good. So that's my take on the definition of profaners in the prince's speech in the first, I believe that's the, the first act of Shakespeare. Act one, scene one, Vernonia, a public place. Yep. All right. So what do you think? Leave, leave a like, hit the subscribe button. Really, let me know if you'd be interested in having me read more Shakespeare like this. I really enjoy it, and I have discovered that I really like reading Shakespeare as it should be read. If I didn't read it as it should be read, let me know. Peace out, my wonderful viewers. Humans are weird. We took a vote, and humans are weird. I have the data. Two books in a series of human absurdity. Go check out these short story collections. What will our little green friends think of us when we finally do make it to space? Find out the answer in t two books of human absurdity. Humans are weird, we took a vote, and humans are weird, I have the data. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo and Google Play.